Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this is a 2006 F250 Super Duty with the 6 liter diesel. Today we're going to perform some regular scheduled maintenance. Uh, first we're going to start off with an oil change. Stick with us, I'll show you how it's done. Step one, prepare your engine oil drain pan, unlike I did last time. You want to make sure you empty it because this truck takes a lot of oil. The oil capacity is actually 15 quarts. So this is a 15 quart oil pan. I drained all the old oil out of it, but last time what I forgot, I started draining the oil into the pan and I forgot to remove the plug. So make sure your plug is removed your vents open and also your uh, empty cap to empty the jug is on. So now we can fill this pan and we'll fill it all the way up just in this one oil change without it pouring all the way out over the top. Almost did that last time. Power stroke. The 6 liter diesel has uh, a paper element uh, filter for the engine oil and it's on top of the engine here in this housing. This is a plastic cap. We have our monster socket, which is a 36 millimeter. Now this is the first step because when you uh, remove pressure from this cap, the filter is on a spring loaded cartridge, which it springs up and when it springs up, it opens a valve so that all the oil in this housing will drain back down into the tank. See, it just popped up. This paper element, it snaps in to the top side of the cap. So right now I'm just gonna pop it out of there, supply light pressure downwards. These, these little spring clips here snap into the uh, recessed diameter in the lid. And then here's our massive drain pan with our plug. So we're, we're going to drag our oil pan in and loosen this guy up so it can drain. That's a 19 millimeter. You want to be careful, sometimes this drains so fast that your uh, drain pan can't let it drain into the tank fast enough. So obviously the vent cap you want open, but sometimes I have to uh, pop the drain uh, cap on it so it drains fast enough. Make sure there's no metallic particles on the end of your plug. Clean her off. Clean the washer off. Clean off the sealing surface of the pan. And thread your plug back in. Now this is the only truck that I use a torque wrench on the plug because I have to get it out uh, for the plastic cap on the oil filter. I don't want to break that cap, plastic cap uh, because I over tightened it a little bit. And they're actually uh, the same. Uh, Ford calls for 18 foot pounds on this and I think the, uh, we'll double check, but I think the cap up there is like 18 and a half foot pounds or something. And Wait for the clip where the beam breaks. Okay, now we'll go up top and look at that uh, oil filter. I think it's worth noting uh, this mechanism here I need to uh, replace but uh, several years ago when I was um, removing a filter something fell and it was this guy 
which this guy is not supposed to come out. It sits in the middle here. And this guy is a pressure bypass. So if the filter gets clogged for any reason, this thing will uh, spring open and uh, bypass the filter element. So I need to replace this. I believe they call this a stand pipe. This is, it still functions uh, fine. This is just the way it was in there. Uh, but uh, I have to make sure I don't lose that down. Oh, and I just dropped it in there. That's cool. Look at that. I think that's the first time this tool is ever useful. Here's a part number for the kit. This kit could be uh, obsoleted by now or outdated with a new part number or a different part number. Uh, I've had this one for several years. I'm just now getting around to replacing it. Uh, came with instructions. A little bit different instructions for the uh, Econo line versus the F series. So here's the main oil filter return tube, and this is the part that's broken on mine. It's still there, and it still works, uh, as it's supposed to, it's just a uh, bypass. But what I didn't realize is this also is a latch, so this has to push in before the whole filter housing will go down and compress which mine doesn't do that now because this piece is broken off of the internals. But uh, the little plunger in there and the piece or little piston itself is the check. This extra functionality here is just a uh, special feature, which I think that's a special feature to make sure you put in the correct filter. So I'm not for sure why this piece broke on mine. I'll show it to you when we take it off. Uh, I've never put in an aftermarket uh, oil filter. I've always used Ford Motorcraft oil filters. I have a Ford Motorcraft cap, it's original. So I'm not really for sure why that broke. Maybe uh, just old and the plastic was worn. This is a new one. Come with a new uh, gasket or o-ring for the bottom and one new bolt it's of great importance to not remove this screw or this screw just loosen these front screws and remove the rear screw so we'll loosen these screw get a magnet in there okay we got her with a magnet now this guy we just need to rotate counterclockwise I believe right about like that and then lift straight up. And the old gasket came out with it. Yeah, that's what she looks like with the old gasket or the old standpipe removed. I'm just going to try to put the new gasket in position down in the housing. Okay, that actually pops in a recess down there and it has a nice little groove that it sits in so that was pretty convenient uh, just make sure you don't drop it in the hole the tube doesn't have anything that really retains it in the right spot but uh, that captures it down there so uh, that was pretty easy I definitely do it that way I did put a little bit of oil on it before I uh, stuck it in there so we'll just drop our new one in
push down and rotate slightly so it uh, goes under those two spring tabs. You know, wiggle it a little bit uh, to get it to align with that back screw. There's a raised boss that uh, it needs to go next to. And now we just need to reinstall our screws and tighten it up. This is the official Helms uh, workshop manual that they use in the dealerships. Or at least this is what they used back in the day. It's 2006. They might just plug it into a computer now and get all the information they need. It says on new oil filter return tubes, tighten to six newton meter or 53 inch pound. And use oil filter return tubes, tighten to three newton meter or 27 inch pounds. So I understand old versus new, uh, 53 or 27. But if you go back to the torque specs in the beginning, it says oil filter return to bolt new base 44 inch pounds and it says oil filter return tube reinstallation 27 so there's a discrepancy here so I put a uh, screw on the end of the socket put a little tape on it hopefully it stays on there so we can get it started And we're in. So you just get it started without cross threading it. I'm going to try the torque wrench just to see how it feels. And if it feels like it's gone too far, we're just going to say, forget it. Okay, that worked pretty good. New bolts torque to 44. You got the new stand pipe installed. It was actually really uh, easy, kind of ridiculously easy. I don't know why I waited this long. Uh, I think probably because I used it broken for so long that it was just normal. So that's fixed, I'm happy, that's good. So let's get back to changing the oil. Right now, as we have to do, we tighten the drain plug on the bottom. We need to install a new O-ring on our oil filter housing cap here, install the new filter, torque the cap down, and fill her with oil. So this is the new filter element. Ford Motorcraft FL2016. Comes with your large paper element. It also comes with uh, instructions, but what's important in here is uh, there's a spot here where you can hook it. If I can see it, there it is. dip it in oil first so it's lubricated make sure it's nice and clean then the oil filter if you look down in the housing this button here right here that's the button that pushes that little plunger and if you look here uh, if the pressure is too much, it will push the plunger down and allow it to open to this hole here. I don't know if you can see that. So I always clip the filter in the top of the housing. I always clean the O-ring sealing surface first. So this thing locks it in the up position, so it makes sure he has the correct filter. Probably why it broke. It's a little sticky. Needs some oil on it. Okay, we have our 
torque wrench set to 18 and a half foot pounds or 25 newton meters for this plastic cap and we're going to torque this cap down. That's it. Okay, now all we have to do is fill the crankcase back with oil, back up with oil, and we're good to go. You. Yeah. Have our old quart can that we use as our funnel, as always. Oh, that's not good. This just in. You gotta smoke a little. Okay. Oil's a little cold. She's coming up pretty, pretty slow. And I just need to repeat that two more times, less the spilling all over the side of the exhaust manifold. Okay, we're on the underside now. We're looking at the 4x4 drive shaft on the driver's side inner frame rail. I'm going to try to position you so you can see, but it might be too dark up there. Let me get you some light. So this is the filter housing mounted on the frame rail. And the filter comes out the end of that uh, black plastic cap of 36 millimeter uh, socket, much like the oil filter, except the filter is a shorter element. Okay, we're looking up from the bottom. Uh, this cover right here, and then this is the drain plug. Normally it's just a hex plug. This is an aftermarket uh, plug that uh, is knurled and it's a larger diameter so you can unthread it with your fingers which I think is really convenient. Uh, I've only had this for a couple of years now. Previously, I just had the regular plug that threaded in there. And what I found out the hard way was that this cover doesn't have real threads in it. It just has like one little wing sticking out there uh, for the plug to drive into. And over time of tightening it and loosening it, taking it in and out and uh, and if you're me, over tightening it because you're afraid it's going to fall out, uh, that little uh, thread feature, if you want to call it, because it's not a real thread in my opinion, that little thread feature will break off of this cover. And uh, I actually had to replace this cover uh, with a new part. And if you don't have it already, I recommend getting one of these aftermarket thread in uh, drain plugs. It has a little leg that sticks in there so it hangs out and it's supposed to make it drain uh, better so it doesn't come shooting out. It's supposed to kind of trickle down the plug uh, but we'll see how good that works. Drain our water uh, separator. Oh yeah, that works great. Here's where things get weird. Everybody needs their tube of jelly. I always uh, lubricate the o-ring up on this with a uh, Vaseline jelly so the o-ring seats and doesn't destroy itself. I had one plug where the o-ring uh, tore itself from getting stuck inside the housing so that wasn't good. 
We got her lubed up real nice. I'm gonna work her back in there. There we go. Finger tight will do. Has the hex in them, and I always keep a uh, hex for this inside the glove box just in case there's an emergency and you need to drain it. You. Yeah. Okay, since we uh, drained the water separator, it's important in my mind to prime the fuel system by rotating the key. You can hear the pump running, it makes it like a noise. And I like to do this uh, multiple times. Wait to rotate the key until you hear the pump turn off. Let's try it again. You can hear it as it's starting to build up pressure. It uh, becomes uh, not as loud. It kind of it kind of sounds more like a motor under load. That should be good. Six liter power stroke turbo diesel. 100% stock, still going strong. Uh, this was a late model, so that might have affected the production of the 6 liter, but uh, I really enjoy this engine. I think it's a good running engine and a good running truck. You just need to properly maintain them and don't put a bunch of aftermarket crap on them to dial them up. You can do that, just don't be mad when it breaks. If you uh, like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave all your questions and comments in that section below, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everyone.